The normal human body contains between 10 to 12 units of blood. That's between 6 to 7 litres for my American friends out there. And if you were to bottle that up, it would look something like this. Now, when watching the Bucky anime, you might start thinking to yourself, hey, I'm seeing quite a lot of blood here. When's this guy going to keel over and die? Well, you're not alone. I've thought that too. Now, I've got a background in head and neck surgery, so I've seen my fair share of blood. And I thought to myself, why not try and estimate if these larger than life characters also have a larger than life blood supply. So if you've ever wondered how much blood you can lose before you pass out, or when you might give a blood transfusion and you like the Baki anime, well, you're in the right place. So let's throw today's character up on the screen with a healthy supply of blood and get your plasters ready because we're about to begin. Oh god, a blade straight to the eye here. He didn't see that coming. But realistically, the eyeball doesn't have a massive blood supply. It tends to be supplied by very small capillaries. So you're unlikely to bleed profusely from an injury like this, and I'd be more worried about your vision. So I'm going to estimate a blood loss here of anywhere between 15 to 20 mils. <laughs> <laughs> so Retsu here throws Doyle's move back at him. And if anything, it's actually a merciful attack, as the heat from this flame will likely cauterise the wound, stopping the bleeding. Fast thinking, Retsu, we'll make a doctor out of you yet. But in all seriousness, we do use both chemical and thermal cautery to help stem bleeding during surgery. Just don't try this method at home. <laughs> Retsu is armed to the teeth here with hundreds of kunai. Does he go around all shopping malls dressed with these? Now depending on how sharp these kunai are as well as the force you're able to generate behind them as well as the location you'll be hitting will determine how much blood loss we see here today. But it looks like this one's hit Doyle in the back which isn't a vital point. However we do see an impressive blood spatter and so I'm going to estimate this in the region of about 30 mil. And so long as he doesn't pull that kunai out, the bleeding shouldn't be excessive. Gosh, and there we see a full barrage of kunai being thrown there by Retsu. But how many has he actually thrown? Well, if we look back in this scene, we can count that there's approximately 32 on his person. Let's say he's thrown them all. Now Doyle is doing the right thing here in curling up. He's protecting his vital organs and vital arteries. Because realistically, if any one of those structures got hit, you'll be looking at death within minutes. Now let's estimate that each kunai draws 30 mils of blood and there's 32 of them. That's going to come out to a total of 960 mils of blood loss. Now that equates to about 10 to 15% of your blood volume and it's at this point that you might begin to start to feel more mild side effects such as nausea, anxiousness and a general sense of unease. <laughs> Oh god, what a nasty injury. Talk about falling on your own sword. Obviously, the deeper the wound, the greater the risk of causing further damage and thereby excessive bleeding. And just remember that most vital arteries are actually hidden, whether that's under a deep muscle or being protected by a joint. And really what we're seeing here are the kunai being pushed deeper into doyle shoulders, which don't really have any vital arteries. So I'll estimate a further blood loss of around 250 mil. Now this brings his total loss to just under 20% of his blood volume, and theoretically he could still make it out of here. But we just need to be realistic, as once blood loss has exceeded 20%, we start to see the features of hemorrhagic shock where your heart rate goes up and your blood pressure goes down. And it's at this point that you're at risk of losing consciousness.
Oh god, a blood snot ball straight to Retsu's eye. I hope he reports that and gets some post-exposure prophylaxis. Who knows what bloodborne diseases Doyle might be carrying. Of course, something like this isn't as bad as blood-to-blood -blood contact, but you're still putting yourself at risk and it's worth talking to your doctor if something like this happens. Oh gosh, okay, there we see Retsu with another concealed weapon as he slashes at Doyle's back. Now there are several large muscles which make up the back, all of which assist with moving your upper limbs, such as putting your hands above your head and moving your neck. So a slice like this would really incapacitate your opponent. And looking at the blood gushing from this wound, I'd estimate we're looking at a further loss of around 500 mil. So totaling things up, it looks like we've exceeded that 20% blood loss. And it's really at this point that you're likely to see things like confusion, general disorientation, your breathing might become more rapid and shallow, and there's a risk of you passing out. Oh, and then we see Doyle stab Retsu in the upper spine, and with sufficient pressure, he could have potentially severed his spinal cord, leaving Retsu paralysed. However, it looks like the blood loss is beginning to catch up. But Retsu responds with a barrage of strikes which don't draw any blood, but are likely to expend more of Doyle's red blood cells by causing bruising and internal organ damage. It's just too difficult to estimate the loss here. Oh god, he's done exactly what we advise people not to do. Do not take out the blade. And the reason we advise you not to is really threefold. The first is you might do more damage with removing the blade. Second is the blade often gives us an indication of the depth of the wound and the subsequent damage. And finally, the blade often acts like a plug, preventing further blood loss. Once you remove it, the bleeding accelerates. And now that these kunai have been removed, you're looking at 32 open wounds bleeding freely. And I'd say you're looking at a loss of 5 to 10 mils of blood per minute per wound. So in total, that's around 300 mils of blood loss per minute. Really, at this rate, he'd be dead in about 15 minutes. <laughs> you really gotta love Doyle's never die attitude. Just when you think he's on the back foot, he pulls out another surprise attack to try to claim victory. And who knows, maybe some of that heat from that chest explosion has helped to cauterize some of his wounds and slow down the bleeding. But it looks like that kick here he takes from Retsu has caused a jaw fracture as a minimum, which won't necessarily contribute to further blood loss unless he chews through his tongue. <laughs> Oh, and Retsu is a savage here, as we see Doyle take further head trauma, facial injuries, and then an all-round body beating. And we do see further bleeding here from Doyle's nose, mouth, and all around the body. But fortunately, it doesn't look excessive, so I'm going to estimate this at around 250 mils. Now this brings us to a total of over 2 litres blood lost, which is over 30%. At this point, there's a high chance of Doyle just passing out, especially if he doesn't seek urgent medical assistance. There's also a greater risk of him suffering more serious side effects, such as coma and death. <laughs> and just like that, he's saved by the bell, with Jack Hanma turning up and injecting Retsu with some sort of anaesthetic. And it looks like he's injected it into his spinal cord, which might account for why it has such a quick onset. And we call the type of anaesthetics that are injected into the spine epidurals, and we often use them for things like pregnancy. However, they don't usually cause people to become unconscious.
Okay, so here we see Doyle standing there with puddles of blood forming around him. Now let's say he's got to survive the night there, that's another 7 hours on his feet. And he's only got around 5 litres of blood left. Now your body needs around 50% of your blood volume to effectively pump oxygen around your body. Any more than 50% blood loss and your heart just stops pumping, your organs begin to fail and you go into a coma. So after a little bit of maths, for Doyle to survive the night, the maximum he can afford to lose is 3 mils of blood per minute. And just to put that into perspective, the vials that doctors use to take blood contain 5 mils of blood, so Doyle can only afford to lose about half of that per minute. So, in this scene, Doyle has clearly passed out and he looks really pale, which is a sign of anemia or blood loss. Also, Retsu detects a really quiet pulse, which is an indication that Doyle is just barely alive. We normally call a pulse like this thready in that the force of the pulse is weak, which is normally determined by the amount of blood rushing around the body. At this point, he's going to need an urgent blood transfusion just to keep him alive. Okay, so it looks like fortunately Retsu has gotten to this treatment room just in time, and it looks like it's given him a blood transfusion. So let's top Dor's blood gauge all the way back up to 100%. And it's really important that he gets topped up with red blood cells and not just water solution, as remember, it's the red blood cells that allow you to carry oxygen to your vital organs like your brain and your heart. Without it, the organs would die. Now for a normal healthy man, we'd expect you to have a blood count of between 135 and 170. It's really only if your blood count drops below 80 that we consider giving you a blood transfusion. Blood is a precious item, after all. <laughs> and what a nice way of thanking everyone for saving his life by taking theirs. But just to clarify, just because somebody needs blood doesn't just mean anyone can give it to them. The bloods that you're mixing must be compatible. The important ones to remember are that if your blood type O negative, that you can give anyone blood, and if your blood type AB, then you can receive blood from anyone. Do you know what yours is? Fortunately, blood group O is the most common one out there. <laughs> <laughs> I love the level of preparation here. But just because he's wearing a fireproof outfit doesn't mean that he can survive an explosion. For those who are in the vicinity of that explosion, you'll be looking at them sustaining severe burns, either second or third degree, which can be life threatening. <laughs> <laughs> so, just when he thought he was scot-free, he bumps directly into Mr. Dopa Orochi. And it looks like he's lost some teeth here, sustained a jaw fracture, and suffered further blood loss from these injuries. And just when we've got you back up to 100% Doyle, you must be addicted to pain and injuries. Now he's actually unlikely to have bled out excessively from these injuries, I'd estimate in the ballpark of around 100 to 200 mils. Yo. Oh, and a direct hit to the nose here, I'm assuming fracturing his nose and causing it to bleed. Now you'd be surprised how much blood you can lose from a nose injury like this. Really, it's potentially litres. Fortunately, Doyle happens to be in the presence of a Barky doctor, so I'm going to estimate this at around 500 mils before he stops the nosebleed with compression.
Oh god, and that's probably one of the worst injuries that I've seen in the Barkyverse. I mean, he's punched him in the face so hard that he's caved in his facial bones. And we're looking at a type 3 Lefort facial fracture. And the problem with injuries like this is that there's a high risk of causing uncontrollable bleeding to the point of death. And also we see blood here coming out of Doyle's ear, which we call hematymphony. Now, if we see this sign as a doctor, we've automatically got to think about a possible basal skull fracture, which can lead to bleeding on the brain, as well as in and around the skull. And in the event of this type of bleeding, we've actually got to drill holes into the skull to help relieve the pressure. So I'm going to give a conservative estimate of blood loss here of around a litre. And I would hope that they've got that Bucky doctor around to stop it. <laughs> so finally here we see Doyle submit here to his opponent. And that's a sensible decision if you ask me. I don't think he could survive any further blood loss. And I don't think anyone at the dojo is going to be forthcoming with giving any more blood. Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Don't forget to give us a like and consider subscribing to the channel so that you don't miss out on any future videos like this. Otherwise, I'd recommend one of these two videos and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks 